Good evening, YouTube readers. I'm here once again bringing you another new episode of Novel Ideas with Jessie. And as you probably already guessed, I am Jessie. Tonight's review is going to be going over um, The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. It's a company to the episode I posted early Monday of the Manga Classics version of The Scarlet Letter. And um, as I stated in the uh, my manga review that we will be going over the actual classic novel on the following Friday. So here we are. Um, as I said before, The Scarlet Letter was written by Nathaniel Hawthorne and it was published in the 1850s. Um, it's based off of uh, a setting in about the 1840s of a Puritan village uh, located in Salem, Massachusetts. And as anyone who's ever had to read this book in high school, which I have, or in college, which I have done that as well, um, I actually find myself kind of half liking and half disliking this book. And I can say it honestly doesn't have, my dislike has nothing to do with Nathaniel Hawthorne's writing style or capabilities. Because given the time it was written and the subject matter provided, even though the literature may seem a little dry at times, I believe the subject matter was interesting and it held your attention. And character growth is a really big thing in this story and I believe um, Nathaniel Hawthorne really um, pervade that in his story writing you get to see a lot of character growth um, the story's main protagonist is Hester Prynne she was the wife of Dr. Chillingworth who was sent to uh, Salem ahead of him by herself and at the time, uh, the um, as it's explained in the book, I believe, they he was much older than she was. She was a young bride, and she was pretty much put into marriage by her parents. It wasn't a choice of her own. She never really loved Chillingworth, but she respected him. Well, Hester spent a great deal of time in the village by herself, uh, Chillingworth having not shown up in years, everyone assumed he had died at sea. And this is in the time that Hester uh, participated in an extramarital affair with a uh, suitor who we don't learn about at the beginning of the book, but you, you get the general idea of who it was. And to be honest, you know, something that was never really discussed in the book or the manga at the time, no one exactly named who the seducer was and who was the seducee. It's like everyone automatically it just expected that it was the woman who did the seducing. It it's pretty much goes back to the old biblical story of Adam and Eve. Everybody just says that Adam was the one, uh, Eve was the one who took the first bite of the apple and she seduced Adam into taking a bite and blah blah blah. But anyway, it was never exactly verified who seduced who. But and participating in this extramarital affair, Hester becomes pregnant. Now, when a married woman is in a village and her husband has not shown up in years and she suddenly becomes pregnant, you can generally expect there is going to be talk around town. So, when Hester finally does give birth, I believe, well, they never really verified that in the novel either, whether they imprisoned Hester when she began to show that she was pregnant or did they imprison her after she had already given birth? But regardless, when we really first start the novel, we see that Hester Prynne is in jail. And we're explained to why she's there after she had given birth to her little girl named Pearl. And they put Hester on a scaffolding in the middle of the village in front of the jail. And they humiliate her and condemn her in front of the entire village. And um, this is when she is marked with the scarlet letter A, which stands for adulteress. And they, they demand from her that she confessed who her secret lover was. But Hester, in all her love, refused to... Dis that's the word I'm looking for her. To reveal him. And this is one fact that always bothered me throughout the story. Hester loved this man so much that she would not wreck his reputation 
in the eyes of the village by giving the town the name that they wanted so bad. But at the same time, this man was willing to watch this woman suffer through years of condemnation and humiliation at the hands of the villagers, but at the same time didn't have to suffer it himself. I mean, in my heart, I believe that he lusted after Hester, but I do not believe in my heart that he loved her because even he could have confessed to his part of the actual sexual liaison here and yes he would have lost the respect of the villagers in that sense but at the same time he at least would have had a wife who loved him and a daughter who loved him at the same time and they would have been a family together but at, he just he decided that his reputation and his upholding in the village was a lot more important which makes me think if he was so concerned about it then then why in the world did he have the affair to start with but as we, um, well, I don't want to be like, oh, spoilers here, I'm ruining it for you. But, um, if you haven't read it by now, big spoilers, the father of Pearl turns out to be Reverend Dimsdale, author Dimsdale. And he is a priest, or a reverend of the village, which makes him a holy man. And I guess that's so much more worse if a person decides to have an extramarital affair because you're supposed to be a, a person of the Lord. But... Hester Prynne, who pretty much was almost put at the stake to burn in front of the whole village, and I don't mean that literally, more metaphorically, she spends the rest of the story rising from the ashes of that. Yes, people stare down their noses at her. Yes, they talked about her behind her back, and they, they thought her daughter was some imp or some little devil spawn. But out over the years and over the story's course of time, you know, she has one of the biggest character growths because she went from a woman who was despised amongst the villagers and she grew to become almost a martyr or a, a matron because with that A, it gave her a different set of responsibility, it gave her a different outlook on life, and she was able to help those around her that everybody else would turn away, the sick, the weak, the poor other sinners who made bad decisions and she pretty much became like a, a candle in the dark to these people and she helped and and by accepting her sin by standing out in the open well you know that's always so an interesting fact there too by accepting her sin see when you have sins like this extramarital affairs and the woman becomes pregnant in her day, you had no choice but to accept a sin. You couldn't exactly cast it away and say, no, I didn't do that. Hester was pretty much had no choice in the matter. You know, it was there for everybody to see. So she never really confessed her sin as much as she accepted. And I mean, if something like this were to happen in modern times, there's things or procedures to be done that could keep this quiet from people, which is still very disagreeable. But it enabled her other half, you know, the Arthur Dimsdale, to keep quiet about the situation. But either way, by Hester admitting to her sin and accepting it, she was able to build herself along the way and found a new way to accept people and to help others by doing so. But at the next to this, in um, co sharp contrast here, you have Arthur Dimsdale, a man who's supposed to be a, a man of the Lord, a, a reverend, supposed to be a helper to the villagers to teach them right from wrong. He refuses to admit his sin because he's a coward. And I believe, um, I don't, it, it's pretty well conveyed by Nathaniel Hawthorne that he was a coward, but I really enjoyed that in the manga version because by the artistic styles of Son Nico Lee, you can really just look at the pictures and tell that Arthur Dimsdale is a coward but by being a coward and not admitting to his part in it he pretty much has to suffer his inner conscience the entire time because he knew he did wrong every day he got up at his altar to preach to the village to have a better life he was nothing but a hypocrite he wasn't a, shop, a shepherd leading his flock he had gone astray himself and he refused to confess it and God had known what he'd done. His God had known what he had done. And definitely Chillingworth knew what he had done. 
because at so, at the when Hester was still in jail after she had given birth to Pearl, this is exactly when Chillingworth, her husband, decided to show up. And Hester at the time thought that he was, you know, revenge on her and the baby. But it turns out he didn't want revenge on her. He wanted revenge on her secret lover, who Hester refused to confess to. So Chillingworth, doing his own investigations, ends up coming to the same conclusion that we all do, that it was Arthur Dimsdale. So he stays close by to the reverend because after a while the reverend's help starts to decline pretty much his conscience is eating away at him because he refuses to let out this lie and at the same time chillingsworth is kind of encouraging him uh containing this sin within him because he's aware of what it's doing to arthur dimsdale's um conscience and body and overall health and as I said, you know, and you, there's like uh, three contrasting characters here that you get to see, and the character growth through it, which I know is a word I bring up a lot. I'm sorry. We, you see, Hester go from the town harlot to a matron. I know she wasn't a harlot, but that's kind of what they viewed her to a matron for the lost and sinners. You see this great man, this uh, this savior of the people become this sickly coward who cannot even stand before his own people and confess his sin and Chillingworth who we didn't really get much of a good view of who he was we see him that he becomes something of a demonic monster after a while that the that he can't even recognize but we have these three contrasting characters, uh, and this is their character growth over the stories. They're not necessarily good character growth, uh, and I mean that in a way is that they are written very well, but as in context to the character's soul or conscience, two out of the three are terrible. But in the end, finally, Arthur Dimsdale finally decides to confess his sin of adultery with Hester Prynne. And that's when Pearl, who is Hester and Arthur's daughter, accepts him as her father. Because, I, I know I'm jumping around a bit here, Be, because even though he in secret would like to approach her and, and embrace her, she would never allow them to forget what their sin was because to Pearl, if they forgot what their sin was, like when Hester took off her A in the woods secretly when she was conversing with Arthur and Dimsdale, to Pearl that meant they were casting her aside. If Arthur Dimsdale would have gotten on that scaffold and had confessed what he had done and stood side by side with Hester, Pearl would have accepted him as her father because then he would have been accepting her, accepting responsibility. But, yep. As a general rating overall, I give this book a 4 out of 5 stars. As I said, stellar writing, wonderful um, development over time, even though it's a bit long-winded. Not very long written, not that many pages, but it is a bit long-winded for me. And like I said before, the text is kind of dry. But um, great development, great story, and I believe it mixed a good deal of almost like supernatural context and the actual modern thought at the time. And even though it's not, um, a lot of us ideas are not very modern at the time, it is situations you can occasionally still see a copy of in these days when a woman has stuck with a problem and the male is able to lie about it. But um, So it's still very relevant in a way, I believe. And so, um, like I said, good character development. I, I guess my only lacking in it is I just, I really hate Arthur Dimsdale as a, as a person, as a character. It's just, to be such a coward and to allow someone else to suffer in the eyes of others simply for your own reputation and ego is just deplorable. So, I can't necessarily, uh... I can't necessarily, you know, cast down uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne for that. He did a very good job. He he wrote it well enough that I actually hated this character. But 
um, I, I, I really did enjoy it because at the time, you know, this was a very strong character, Hester Prynne was, and her, and she stood for something at the time that you didn't really see in literature, especially written by a man. You know, uh, it's hard to find strong characters at the time written by, strong women characters written by men, but she, Hester Prynne became a very strong character. She accepted her responsibilities and she made change through it. So, overall, like I said, four out of five stars. It was a great read. Now, uh, I'm sorry, my, my brain's all jibbled. But, join us again Monday when we will go over our next manga classic, which is to be named at a later date. I have so many to go through, so many I could pick. I'm filling up the entire month of September with manga classics on Monday and then the novels on Friday. So I have such, so many I could pick from. I could literally put my hand in, in a hat and pull out a paper and decide on a title. But come back Monday and I guarantee we will have a new review to go over, a new manga to review and then Friday another classic so youtubers keep reading visit your local library check out a book uh, read an audio book ebook Kindle Unlimited uh, read a video but support your local library and get out there and read and I'll see you next time bye bye